The Astro A40TR is a wired gaming headset that can be purchased alone or you can get it together with the Mixamp Pro TR, which is how I got it. Now, if you get this device alone, apparently it comes with a splitter as well. There are no controls on this device itself. It just comes with an inline cable with a mute switch, which can be activated here. Well, supposedly, because my mute switch does not work at all, it's not just me. I've seen this a lot, very common on Reddit. I could, since I bought this myself, I could ask Astro Customer Support to be another one, maybe buy another one myself, but already we're off to a bad start. The ear cushions, speaker tags, headband padding, and mic can all be swapped out using the Astro A40 TR mod kit, which I have reviewed already. Now the Mix Amp Pro TR is an audio amplifier. You can plug the A40 into the 3.5 jack, and then you can adjust the gain you can change the voice and game mix, like increase the volume of the game or your chat like Discord. You can enable the Dolby audio or turn it off. And then you can swap between four different EQ presets with this button. Now on the back, there's a switch to go from PlayStation or PC mode, or there's an Xbox version of this as well. Make sure that you're getting the correct version. You can daisy chain multiple together. And I'll talk more about this in a later section. Using the Mixamp Pro TR also lets you connect to the Astro Command Center software. In the software, you can customize EQ profiles, change the mic volume and side tone, and adjust some other settings that I haven't really been able to test in practice yet. So the way that you would connect this is you would plug the A40 or any headset really into the 3.5 port. Then on the back, there's a USB port and you would connect that with the USB type A on the other end into your console or PC. This version works with PC, PS4, and PS5, but you'll need an HDMI to optical adapter in order to get this to get full functionality on PS5. I know the Xbox version works on PC, but I don't know anything else about it because that's not the one I got. Now this isn't a tutorial video, but basically to get the game voice mixer to work on PC, just select Discord or whatever communication software and set that to mix amp voice and leave the rest of your audio as mix amp gain and you can adjust the volumes with the slider on the right. On console, you'll need to use the optical cable, which will have the game audio go to the optical and then set the PS4 to only send chat audio through USB. If you're like me and you got a PS4 Slim, you'll have to send the optical into your actual TV instead. And there's a lot of videos on how to set that up, but basically I got it to work perfectly, PS4 Slim. Now the Astro A50 is the wireless version of the A40 and it comes with the base station. It only pairs with the base station, no Bluetooth, and the base station, it can only charge the Astro A40 while it's actually connected to a PC or console. In my experience, when I plugged it into the wall, it just wouldn't charge the A50 at all. But there is a USB port on the Astro A50 itself so that if you have like a wall charger, you can plug it into there like that. Otherwise, you would just place the A50 onto these connectors while this is connected to a PC or console and it'll start charging. Now I tested connectivity with this again, PC and PS4 and with the PS4 Slim, same thing with the optical cable to connect it and then change the game chat mix just the same way as the Astro A40 TR. The Astro A50 has a very similar build and sound quality to the Astro A40 TR, which I'll cover in depth, but a lot of the controls and connectivity have been streamlined. Instead of relying on an external mix amp for controls, all the controls are on the Astro A50 itself. At the top, there is an on off switch. There's a button to enable the Dolby audio or disable it. Then there's an EQ preset cycle button. This one only goes between three presets. The mix amp goes between four. It'll make one beep, two beeps or three beeps depending on which preset it's on because there's no visual indicator here. And then there's a headphone gain slider on the bottom. This is just the actual gain of the headphone volume itself, not your system volume. And the game voice mix is controlled by the buttons that are on the right ear cup that are just right on the outside. Now the microphone on the Astro A50 is non-detachable, but it does have flip to mute, which actually does work. And the speaker tags on this are non-detachable, so it's gonna be stuck as open back, whereas the A40TR, you can change it. It's default open back, and then you can get the mod kit here, which will have some little rubber seals, which will make it close back. So since you can't change out the speaker tags or the mic, and it's just gonna be the cushioning inside, for the ear cups and for the headband. I didn't even get the mod kit for the A50, but I used it on the A40, so I have a pretty good idea of how it will work on here anyway. I bought my Astro A40 TR with the mix amp together for $280. I bought my Astro A50 for $300. 
And I bought the Astro A40TR mod kit for $60. To see current pricing on all of these, I'll have a link below. Now let's cover headphone audio quality. I tested the Astro A40 with and without the mix amp on my PC, on my PS4, and I even tested on my phone. The Astro A50, I tested on PS4 and my PC. And just to get this out of the way, the mixed amp will make your Astro A40 or pretty much any headset louder, but it won't magically make the sound better. Putting in the A40 on my PC at 100% volume was like having the A40 in here, the Mix Amp Pro, at 80% power. If the signal was clean before, it's not gonna change anything, but it can help with the mic because like if I plug my A40 into a splitter, because I have a splitter right here, into my mic input, the signal's not that clean going into my motherboard, so this can clean it up. But if your signal's already clean, this isn't gonna make it just sound better, it'll just make it louder. I think the Mixamp Pro TR overall is a hype beast product, but I'll talk more about it later. If I could describe the audio quality of both of these headsets in one word, it would be finally. Headphone audio quality on both the A40 and 50 is excellent. As you can see from the videos on this channel, the reviews on my website, all the products behind me, I have a ton of headsets and traditional headphones. And of course, I've tried countless more in stores. And the A40 and A50 are so refreshing. They don't match up to some heavy hitters like the Sony XM4 or Bose 700, but as far as gaming headsets are concerned, these things are dominant. Unlike everything else I've reviewed so far, the Cloud 2, Cloud Alpha, Sony MDR7506, unlike all of those other headphones and headsets that I've reviewed so far, the bass on the A40 and A50 actually exists, and it's good. The highs aren't so screechy that they tear out your eardrums, and the overall quality is still excellent. I wouldn't say the clarity necessarily beats out the Cloud Alpha, but the overall sound is much richer and much more full. The low end is not forgotten. I played a ton of Call of Duty, Cold War, Warzone, Vanguard, listened to music, watched videos. The sound quality is great, especially for immersive games and music. This is actually the first headset that I've reviewed that can actually keep up with Mr. Fab Super Sick with it. I love testing headsets on that song because that will really expose the bass response. And it doesn't distort like most of these headphones. And it also won't just give up like the 7506 and just face plant on the sub bass. Now I will say the overall sound signature is quite flat. So if you're used to super bright headphones, like most of the gaming headsets and the 7506, then footsteps might sound a bit quiet out the box. Just boost the four kilohertz frequency range in either the Astro software or in equalizer APO and you're good to go. Now I do think the presets that Astro gives you are kind of suspect, but you can make your own and these are very receptive to EQ. Unlike basically all those Razer headsets back there, for example, if you try to boost the bass on those even a little bit, they start to distort super fast. And the highs can get harsh on the Razers and the HyperX devices really quick. So the A40 and A50 both sound excellent, but what are the differences between them? Well, the A50 is basically just a slightly worse A40, which makes sense because it's wireless. So there are two main shortcomings of this because it's wireless. First of all, there is a constant audible hiss. The louder that you increase the gain, the louder that's gonna be. And this is pretty common amongst wireless headsets. This was the same with the HyperX Cloud 2 wireless, which I also have right here. But the Astro A50 does get a lot louder than the Cloud 2 wireless. And secondly, the clarity on the A50 is not quite as good as the A40TR. Now I heard another YouTuber, Too Much Tech, say he thinks the A40 is about 15% better than the A50. I would kind of narrow that down a little bit. I'd say maybe the A40 is about five to 10% better, but the A50 does still crush all of the mid-range gaming headsets out. I do want to test this thing against the HyperX Cloud Orbit S, but that'll be in a different video. As for volume with the 3.5 cable that's included, generally this gets to be about as loud as the A50 when they're both at max volume, but with the mix amp, then the A40 definitely gets louder than the A50. So the audio quality win definitely goes to the A40, and I'm really interested in testing this against the HyperX Cloud Orbit S. And I think I'm kind of winding down as far as my journey of trying to find the best gaming headsets. I think I've kind of exhausted all the really popular ones. So I kind of want to get more into traditional headphones, but so far I have found a winner.
And really quickly, I would pass on the Dolby Audio on the Mixamp Pro TR and the A50, unless I guess you just wanna hear constant echo all the time in your music and in your games and have no idea where sniper shots are coming from because they're echoing twice. I keep it off, fake surround sound is trash. You know the drill on this channel. So I already explained what the Mixamp does, but let me just give my quick thoughts on the device overall. Basically, it's convenient. It lets you increase the volume of your headphones or headset louder than you normally would be able to. You can control your game chat volume mix, which is especially rare on console. And you can actually use EQ presets on console, which is incredibly rare. In fact, I've always had issues trying to recommend headsets for consoles specifically, because you have to use the out the box sound. Even if you have, for example, the Cloud Alpha, which can actually sound pretty decent when you EQ that thing and boost the bass pretty high. You can't do that on console, but with the Mixamp Pro TR, you could actually just put an EQ profile here and you could even put the Cloud Alpha in here and sound pretty decent on console. I could also see this thing potentially being useful running a tournament. I don't know about playing in a tournament. I've never played in an FPS land tournament. I've only played in fighting game tournaments and things like that. But I could see like if I was running like a stream station, I could like have two of these and then like daisy chain them together and then both players could play with their own headsets and or whatever headphones they bring or even like provide them. Then they can like, you know, change the volume of just the game itself or if there's like commentators that have to say something to them, they can change the chat. It seems like it'd be pretty cool. I've used a setup that's kind of similar to it, but I haven't actually been able to test these in practice, but that does seem like it'd be pretty tight. Now there are two things that I don't like about the Mixamp Pro. I don't hate them, it's just, I don't like them. So first of all, whenever you plug this in, it defaults to the Dolby Audio being on. It's just the speaker. What's actually kind of funny is in the little instructions that it gives you in the box, it's like, I don't even think it really gives you very many. It's just like one piece of paper. Uh, it doesn't even tell you what this does. If you go on Reddit, there's a lot of people asking, hey, what's the headphone thing do? Because they don't really tell you. I think it's kind of cool because it, it shows you that Astro doesn't really care about this virtual fix around town stuff. They, they know what it is. They don't even tell you what it does. They don't even advertise it. It's like, oh yeah, it's there, but like it's, come on, dude. But yeah, the thing is, almost all those other headsets, in order to turn the fake surround sound on, you have to actually go out of your way to like press a button or something. Even on the A50, you have to press a button to turn it on. Whereas this, you have to press the button to turn it off because it defaults to on. So that is pretty annoying on the Mixamp Pro TR. But you know, just turn it off every time you plug it in or leave it on if you like that type of thing. And the second thing is just the nature of the device. It's really bulky. It doesn't look that big holding it, but like putting it on your desk, it does take up a decent amount of space. But bigger deal is since I think this more of like a console oriented type of device, because a lot of things that you can do on here, like changing the volume or the chat game mix or EQ, you can do that on PC anyway, so you wouldn't really need this. But if you're playing on console, which is where I think this might be more useful, this is kind of just like just hanging out like let's say you're you're playing like on a sofa or something like where do you put this where do you put all the wires the optical cable you know the the usb cable the headphones like there's a lot of stuff that's just kind of hanging out here and this this is big and bulky like it's very awkward to place even the smaller ones like the Stitch series arctis 5 that little uh, chat game mix dial and the little amp there it's like where do i put this this is has the same problem except it's like worse so the mix amp pro tr is a cool device, but it is completely unnecessary. In fact, the reason that it took me so long to buy the A40 is because the community around it, they make it seem like, oh, you absolutely need the mix amp when you get the A40. Otherwise, you're totally missing out on everything. This will transform your headphone audio quality. It will even change, you know, I heard this will change like even Apple ear pods into like this amazing device. Same thing with the mod kit. They were like, oh no, you can't get it without the mix amp and the mod kit, bro. This will totally change the audio. It's absolutely drastic. Man, you gotta put the, the mod kit mic in here. It's gonna sound amazing. It's like, dude, relax. It's not that serious. The mod kit will make your headset close back. It'll isolate sound better, keeping sound from coming in and keeping sound from getting out, which can help the bass response, but the actual drivers are gonna stay the same. It'll give you pleather ear cushions. The mic inside is about 2% better, maybe. And this is pretty convenient and cool, but it doesn't do anything that's actually necessary. It's not required to get good audio quality out of your headset. And for the retail price, I mean, I wouldn't buy it. Personally, I would just buy the A40 TR headset by itself for like 150 or however much it is, when and where you buy it. But if you are balling and you like pimps only edition stuff, then I could see getting the Mixamp Pro TR and even the mod kit, but neither of these are required to get a great experience out of the A40TR. 
All right, this is the Astro A40. I'm using the stock mic. I do have the mod kit ear cups and all that stuff on, but this is the stock microphone. Now this is the streaming noise gate setting, the streaming noise gate setting, Astro A40 TR stock mic. Now this is a microphone test with the Astro A50 and it's on the streaming preset for the noise gate in the Astro Command Center. This is the Astro A50. Night noise gate setting, Astro A40 TR with the stock mic. This is the Astro A40 TR mic test. Now this is the night preset for the Astro A50. Got my window open and I have my computer fan down here. This is the Astro A50. Astro A40 TR on the home noise gate setting. This is the stock microphone. This is the Astro A40 TR. Home preset, Astro A50. This is what this device sounds like. Astro A50 on the home noise gate preset. Astro A40 TR. This is the tournament noise gate setting and this is the stock microphone so i do have the uh, mod kit ear cups and stuff like that this is the astro a40 tr mic test tournament preset for the astro a50 microphone test this is the astro a50 microphone test now talking while typing with the noise gate on streaming and this is the stock mic talking while i'm typing and we'll see if the noise gate tries to cut me off on all these different settings all right, Astro A50, keyboard typing, Astro A50, keyboard typing. Talking while typing on the night setting of the noise gate of the Astro A40 TR in the Astro Command Center. This is the stock microphone. All right, now I'm talking on the night preset. This is the Astro A50. I really should charge this device. I will in a little bit. This is the Astro A50. Home setting, and this is the stock microphone, and I'm doing a keyboard typing test with the Astro A40 TR stock mic. This gate, home. Home preset right now, this is the Astro A50 keyboard typing test. Astro A50 keyboard typing test. And here we are with the tournament setting on the noise gate. Astro A40 TR stock mic. Astro A40 TR. Now we're on tournament. This is a keyboard typing test with the tournament noise gate setting. Astro A50 microphone test. Both the Astro A40 and A50 have slightly above average mics for headsets, though the A50's mic does sound a little bit more muffled. That makes sense considering that it is going to be sending that signal over wirelessly. Now the Astro Command Center noise gates are pretty whack in my opinion. All of them, I wish that you could turn them completely off all the noise reduction and all that stuff. In order to really do that, I think you're just going to have to like use a splitter which that's only a thing on the A40. You wouldn't be able to do that on the A50. You're just gonna be stuck with whatever processing this thing does. And then once you get into the higher filters like the night and the tournament presets, it just cuts out your voice so hard that it's like, what's the point of even using them? But hey, there are headset mics. What can you expect? Next. Just like the sound quality, the comfort and build quality of the Astro A40 and A50 are the best in class for gaming headsets. Yo, hold on, the comfort is best in class, but the build quality is actually not that good, but it's pretty good. Now, these stock ear cups are made of this really soft fabric that feels like putting earmuffs over your ears. It's not that like really rough, kind of hard, fake fabric stuff that they have on the Razer Blackstruck V2 or the SteelSeries Arctis 5. Like, I really don't like those. These are really, really soft. Both the Astro A50 and A40 have this swivel so that you can put them around your neck. Let me go ahead and demonstrate this with the A40. Swivel here, put them around your neck, which actually you get punished for doing that with the A50, but I'll talk about that in a bit. Even without the fake leather ear cushions that you can get with the mod kit, I find the A40 and A50 to be top when it comes to comfort as far as gaming headsets go. Even higher than the HyperX Cloud 2 and Cloud 2 Wireless, which I have right here. And these are very comfortable. I will say the Cloud 2 Wireless, it's a lot lighter than the A50. Like over time, you do feel this like on your neck. So I've gotten a lot more used to it because I've had this just for a little bit. But this is definitely lighter. So this is one that you can completely forget that it's on your head. This just feels really snug and really comfortable. So I could see liking the Cloud 2 better for sure. Both the A40 and A50 do have quite a bit of weight to them. In addition, the clouds, they have like less clamping force, the cloud too, at least. It's very loose, whereas you can like adjust the A50 and the A40 with these adjustment brackets, but they don't get like super long. And it's always, you see, it's kind of like defaulting to like right here. And it is gonna like kind of 
pull in place that's just kind of where it wants to be it wants to be a snug fit whereas it's a lot looser on the cloud too so you might prefer that more but i do definitely enjoy these Build quality is quite good on both, though not quite as good as I initially thought. So when I initially felt these, I thought that the adjustment brackets were made of metal because they look like metal and they feel like metal on the first touch, but I'm pretty sure these are just like hard plastic that have like kind of gloss coating on them. That was the A50 and this was the A40. This looks like metal just like at a glance, but I'm almost positive this is just plastic. But the build quality is pretty good. I would say if you didn't want anything to snap at all, you might be more interested in the Cloud 2 or maybe the Alpha or something like that just because they do have those metal frames. But these are quite sturdy in my own experience. The only thing that I find annoying is that the adjustment brackets do have a lot of resistance, which is good for keeping their shape. But it's bad because on the A50, you have to shrink it all the way down to put it back in the base station. So every single time you take it off your head, you gotta shrink it down and then pull it out. And then you can't just like put it on your head and then like, you know, pull it down. You can, but it's like a little bit irritating. So you have to like take them off to do this, which, you know, it's like whatever. It's like a nitpick, I guess, but that is kind of annoying. And the headband plastic does seem like a volatility point, especially because if you're gonna be using the mod kit on the A50 or the A40, you're gonna to have to keep on pulling these apart when you're gonna realize exactly how thin these really are. But overall, good build on both. Not as good as I initially thought, but still good build quality. Now, before I give my final verdict, there is one major issue that I have with the Astro A50, which I consider a complete deal breaker. If I didn't buy this for the specific purpose of reviewing it, then I would 100% bring this back to the store because I just think it completely ruins my experience with this device. And honestly, I've never even returned a product to the store before, just not my style. So that's saying a whole lot. Now the deal breaker I have with this device is the auto shutoff system. So there are sensors inside that try to shut this thing off to conserve power whenever possible. One of the reasons why I haven't really been able to test what the actual battery life is of this device, it is always trying to turn off. Now there's the basic one, of course, if it's not receiving sound for like five or 10 minutes, however long, it'll shut off. But the one I don't like is the gyro sensor. I don't know where it is, but basically, if you don't have this thing like straight up and down on your head at all times, it'll instantly turn off. It's not like, oh, you play it, place it down, it'll turn off after a couple of minutes. It like, for example, right now I'm doing this review. If I look down at my phone and I have this thing tilted downwards, it'll instantly turn off. If I, let's say, have this on my neck because now it's not straight up and down, it'll turn off. I've literally like looked at my phone you know, had this around my neck just, you know, for a second, been leaning back and watching a YouTube video. How are you going to turn off in the middle of me watching a movie or a video? Like what, whoever came up with this, like there, okay. <laughs> there should be a way to either disable this or customize this or something. It shouldn't be like, oh, well, it's not completely straight up and down. Everybody's not going to be sitting stiff like this at all times. They're going to be leaning back. They're going to be looking at their phone. They're going to be doing whatever it is. It shouldn't completely turn off just because it's not completely straight up and down. That is absolutely asinine. So yeah, whoever came up with this system, get them out, get rid of them. So for my verdict, I fully recommend the Astro A40TR. The only flaw that I found with this device was that the mute switch did not work at all, which is kind of insane, but otherwise this is an excellent headset. It destroys every other headset that I've reviewed so far in comfort, in sound quality. The build quality is great, not as good as I thought it was, but it's still quite good. Now this device is also on retail more expensive than all the other headsets that I have reviewed, besides the A50 of course, but as far as wired headsets go, this is excellent. Now the Mix Amp Pro TR, I only recommend if you have a lot of extra money and you're trying to find something to spend it on or if you have a very specific use case that you would want to use this, maybe like you're running a tournament or something like that. Otherwise, eh, I wouldn't buy it. Same thing goes for the mod kit. It's an extra, but I would actually buy the mod kit before I bought the Mix Amp Pro because the ear cushions are actually pretty comfortable here. I find them equally comfortable as the normal ear cushions but the ability to change the clothes back is pretty cool and I do like the padding that they add in here. The Astro A50 is a great performing device and the convenience factor is very nice to be able to have a 
wireless version of the A40 basically. But I do not recommend this for a few reasons. First is the auto shutoff feature. I think that is poorly implemented and the ability to not customize it is insane. Even Astro on their subreddit, they say that it's a feature, it's not a bug. Also, there's that hissing sound, which is quite grating in my opinion. And then lastly is the price range. There are devices that straight up beat this thing in headphone audio quality when you get all the way up to $300. Again, like I said, the Sony XM4, the Bose 700, there's a lot of devices out there that are just gonna beat this thing because, well, it's priced so much, so now it's really fighting with that bigger competition. But of course, the point of the A50 is it comes with a base station, which will connect directly to your console or your PC, and it's not gonna be using Bluetooth, so it's going to be a lower latency connection, which is the idea, which would be more suitable for gaming than Bluetooth, which has some latency, and worst of all, it cuts out a lot of the time. So if you want a wireless version of the A40, and you're loaded, and none of the issues that I talked about concern you about the A50, then this is a good pickup. The A50 is cool, but the Astro A40 is the truth.